So really excited to be here with you today and to talk about a topic that is very close to both um, to both of us here, um, um, which is marketing. Um, so we're going to be talking about, to be precise, Google Ads and how to leverage online advertising in order to attract more new clients to your salon and spa business. And we have a lot of things to cover today. So I'm actually going to um, dive straight in and just share my screen with you, uh, which should be loading right now. Um, I hope you can see that. Good. So um, we're going to go straight in. We have a ton of things to cover in a fairly short time. You know, there's a lot of uh, content in this, ses uh, in this uh, session today. So, uh, but before we just dive in, I just want to have a little bit of a sense of who do we have here today. So if you want to just give me in the chat, what type of business do you run? Uh, and also, if you're using Google advertising or Google ads in order to promote your business today, just like a yes, no, if you're using Google ads or not and what type of business you run. It just helps us a bit to get a bit more context of you know, who's here today uh, and uh, you know, so we can tailor the content best possible. Um, so while you do that, and I see some responses coming already, which is awesome. Uh, while you do that, we should probably introduce ourselves um, real quick. Some of you might have met me before. So my name is John Halberg and I run the thesalonbusiness.com. Uh, we're really like my goal with what I'm doing with the salon business and also with like webinars today is just to help give you tools and strategies and tactics to help you, you know, build a successful business and grow your business. So that's really what I want to do here today. Um, and I'm really honored as well to be joined today by Jessica, who is a good friend of mine, uh, also a colleague who's killing it when it comes to online marketing. Um, you know, she's been running Google ads for 10 plus years. I think what Jessica doesn't know about online advertising isn't really worth knowing. <laughs> Um, so I'm really just excited to like, go, go into the meat of this session, which uh, Jessica will be covering today. Uh, so great to have you here, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the intro. Um, so yeah, do you want to give like a, just a short background to who you are? So for those of you who see you for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. Jessica Lytle. Um, as John mentioned, I've been working in the, in the digital marketing space for like the last well, almost 14 years or so. So um holistic marketing strategies google ads is absolutely one of those so happy to to dive into that a little bit more today and hopefully uh, you get a lot out of it and take that into uh your strategies for your businesses anything anything else there awesome. okay that sounds great <laughs> and i'm just looking at the chat though like who we have here uh see a bunch of hair salons salon and spa nice. uh, there's a few uh, who are using Google Ads. I see Jenny, yes on Google Ads. Yes, Salon702, Beauty Boss, uh, awesome, uh, Juliet. Um, wow, there is there is a lot of hair salons, nail salons. Um, that's good, so we can, uh, Lash from Brow Studio. Uh, thanks, Nicola. Nice. Uh, skin care and body sculpting from Sherry. Um, so we have a good mix of businesses, a barbershop as well. Yes, sometimes on and off with Google Ads. And I do see uh, some not yet with Google Ads. So hopefully, like what we're going to cover today um, will make you equipped with what you need to kind of feel confident to move forward with, with Google Ads. So uh, great crowd today. Um, so this is kind of what we're going to cover today. Do you want to just walk that through, Jessica? Or? Yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to cover what are Google Ads and why should you care? Um, building your online foundation first, which is important. Understanding the math, which is really kind of the business math behind the marketing so that you can make informed decisions about your marketing budgets. And then we'll dive into kind of like the seven steps or principles that I've highlighted to, to be successful. And then a QA. and a Fantastic. So uh, what is this session about? Yeah, so I wanted to highlight like the session is really going to be about the why and the how to profitably run ads to grow your business on Google and the specific principles to get to get you there, of course. But what I really kind of want to highlight is that this is the foundation of continued learning. So really kind of a roadmap to put you in the right direction to continue that learning. We do get into the details quite a bit on the things that are important that really matter. And I feel like what I'll share with you will make you feel a bit more confident kind of in these areas and what your next step should be. 
even if even if that's you know hiring someone to set you up or hiring someone to audit your account it's good it's important to understand like the foundational knowledge and the why to make sure that even the person you're hiring is the right person to be doing those things for your business so um definitely a lot of the how definitely a lot of the why um i didn't want to go into like just the tactical step-by-step -step campaign setup because really you could find that stuff online without the foundational information it really wouldn't be of value to you so i wanted to provide more value than that so i just wanted to kind of set expectations for what folks can expect today Awesome. Uh, so everyone, just reduce your uh, distract. There's no social media. Like we have half an hour roughly uh, for this, so we're really gonna try to like deliver as much value as fast as possible because we know we have busy business owners uh, on the call today. Uh, so just before uh, I'm gonna be hand over to Jessica, I just want to like talk about some some of the basic stuff to just set the context of what we're doing today. So what is Google Ads? Um, and of course, I see many of you are already running with Google Ads. If you're joining this session, you probably have an idea of what this is. Uh, but essentially, like when it comes to Google Ads, there's two types of Google Ads. There's display ads, there's search ads. What we're gonna be focusing on today is really search ads, which is what you typically see when you go to Google, you search for something. Really today, when you search for anything with like a buying intent or like booking an appointment locally or for a product, you will see ads, right? Typically appearing at the top and at the bottom of the screen. Over the last few years, that's been taking up more and more space. So, of course, you want to have that kind of organic visibility uh, on the search result page with your website and with your potentially social profile listing websites, etc. Yeah. Uh, but it's also good to have a kind of like a paid listing as well, since that takes up a big part of your screen. Um, so those are those are the types of ads we, we're going to focus in on. Now, obviously, Google is not the only platform you could be using uh, for your for you know running ads. In fact, you're like we've done other trainings um, here at the Salon Business as well, using Facebook ads. Uh, there's other platforms that you could use, uh, but there is something that is quite different, I would say, with Google Ads versus, for example, Facebook ads or Instagram ads, um, or like social media ads in general. And that is kind of the user intent, meaning like when when we show an ad to someone in the Google search result, we show that to someone who's looking for hot stone massage or you know, barbershop near me, you have put that into Google and we're showing kind of our ad to that person, which means their intent or like to actually book with us because they're currently like in the mindset of finding a business like yours that is offering your services. You know, they're much more like likely to convert and we're showing up at the right point in time. Whereas if we compare that to like ads on social media, uh, we're basically kind of interrupting whatever conversations they're having with their friends or the content they're consuming there. And we kind of need to be quite aggressive with like a strong offer or something in order to get them to stop paying attention to what they were paying attention to and start paying attention to us, right? So it's just kind of a different approach, um, which is why, you know, I really like Google Ads. And people are searching for the type of services that you offer. So really everyone today, I would say, is, uh, is going online, you know, even before doing business locally and doing a search to kind of understand like which, which business should I be? Uh, should help me out uh, today and uh, you know they're going to be using search for that so uh, before we go into kind of the whole the um, Google Ads uh, strategies uh, something that you know me and Jessica were talking about before we do this did this training is that you know we need to really you know it, it's important that you build some foundation before we start running paid ads because if we have that foundation in place uh, basically the visibility of our business online before we run ads, we're going to get more out of basically the advertising dollars that we're spending. So what do we mean with this about like building your online foundation? Uh, the number one part to this is really your website. So as we start running Google ads, we will be sending traffic to your website. You will get more visitors to your website. Um, so you want to make sure that your website is set up in a way that it can kind of take care of these visitors in an, you know, as good way as possible. So just a few quick principles for you to have in mind as you kind of consider your website and um, that I want to just leave with you here is like the number one principle is you, you want to make sure that your website is really reinforcing to the person landing on the site that they've come to the right place. So, you know, if you're having an ad out for your, you know, massage services, or maybe you're doing your lash studio or whatever your business is, you want to make sure that when people then land on your site, that they understand like, yes, this is a lash studio. I, I understand that I'm in the right place. Whatever that is with like text messaging or with visuals that needs to come across. 
Uh, when it comes to the like booking experience, you want to make that as seamless as possible. You want to have that like book now button really visible so that the person who is clicking on that ad coming into your site doesn't need to go and like look around in you know different places to understand how to even like book that offer or whatever was communicated, but that you have your book now button clearly visible. And just generally the whole booking experience is really important, right? So that you don't have to like send people off to a different site to book or to maybe a page where they need to create an account in order to book and, you know, creating these obstacles, but like having a seamless process here and uh, when people book can it really save, save you a lot here. And that's important to consider. Uh, of course, when it comes to online booking tools and so on, what we promote here is Mango Mint because uh, frankly, it's the best, best there is out there when it comes to this. Like you can brand that experience. Uh, you can really make that flow really easy. You can even like include add-ons. You can you can do a lot of things. You know to kind of get more value out of those um, out of those appointments. Uh, but whatever tool you're using, you know you want to make sure that that is a seamless experience. And for those of you who are interested in trying Mango Mint, I also want to say, um, like if you were to go, there's a free trial, so you can go play with this tool if you're interested in. Um, Using that, just tell uh, the support team that you heard this from us here in this session, and they will actually give you a month for free. That's something that we agreed uh, ahead of this uh, ahead of this session. Just be aware. Um, so yeah, that's that's the website. The last thing I want to say on your website as well is credentials. So you know, people, there will be new people basically discovering here, right, landing on your site, and so you want to make sure that um, um, you know you have credentials on your site, meaning like that people see that you're like a legit business. So whatever that, that could be, that could even just be showing content that you're active on your social accounts, um, showing any like quotes from customers, or even more so like utilizing reviews, right? So you really like show um, that to these people who haven't booked with you before that you're you know the right place for them. And reviews is really the most powerful way of doing this. And I would strongly encourage you before running ads that you are collecting reviews regularly and that you are building kind of your Google profile um, with uh, reviews from from customers. So if you're not collecting that today, really start doing that. And uh, you can automate some of that with your software, but really, in my experience, uh, the best way is just to like have your team asking for reviews when when the clients are satisfied, and you do that you do that face to face. Right. So that's some on when it comes to like laying the foundation. I could talk for a long time about this, and I want to cover it fairly quickly. We have a ton of resources available for you in this space if you want to learn more. Um, so there's a course available that you can get free access to uh, where basically I walk you through every detail on this and like how to collect reviews, how to set up your Google business profile, all of that stuff. Uh, also, like how to build a website, like what's the principles that you should follow in order to make that effective. All of that, there's like full courses available to you. I'm not going to tell you now how to go get them because then you might just jump off and I want you to stay a little bit longer. So. You know, towards the end of this presentation, I'll share like how you can get access access to that. And when it comes to like you know collecting reviews, like improving your website, doing these things, I like this quote because uh, this is not like one of these things like you get a review from a customer and suddenly you know everything changes the day after. But it's really like that like ongoing effort and ongoing habit of collecting reviews, you know, making these improvements that's going to make kind of the big change uh, in the long run. Right. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to hand over to you, Jessica, as well, to cover uh, the math behind the marketing. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I just uh, before we jump into that, can't can't uh, express enough what what John mentioned about just building those foundations, having your Google profile re reviews is absolutely critical. Um, you won't be able to set this up without having that in place anyway. But just really having a focused strategy on on building those reviews is absolutely important, and definitely on the booking site and not just because I'm director of demand gen marketing at Mango Mint, but having that like suite where it's easy for someone to book something online with your business is so important, especially if you're spending a lot of money, driving a lot of people there, you know, make it easy for them to do the thing that they want to do. So yeah, we can uh, jump into understanding the math behind the marketing um, here and really the, the, it's really like the math behind the business marketing. So we can make sure that, you know, you're really thinking about the long-term profits to keep your business and sustainable in the growth there, but um, also to make like informed decisions about pricing and your marketing spend too. Um, sorry, uh, John, can you go back one? 
So this uh, this one slide yeah. on Albert Einstein I put in here because it it's it's a good one. It's if you can't explain it to a six year old, you don't understand it yourself, right? I don't know how many of you um, have ever attended like a webinar or an event with an expert in something, and they kind of speak in such a way that is like really hard to understand, or you know they sound like they know what they're talking about. I definitely have, and it's not really that helpful. So I didn't want to do that here. Um, so I really tried to simplify things that are really complex down, but also still try to provide enough detail into where it makes sense. So yeah, let's jump into it. So um, if someone were to ask me here, you know, Jess, how much should I spend on my marketing campaigns? And how do I know if I'm profitable with marketing? Um, I would respond with this question. Uh, well, that's, it depends. What is your customer worth to you in the long term? Um, and not just their first visit where maybe they spend $100, $200 with you, but do they typically become a repeat customer with you? Um, what percentage of time do they become repeat customers? 50% of the time, more. How long do they stay a customer with you? Because um, the customer lifetime value really kind of estimates the total value of a customer that you know you bring to your business over the course of their entire relationship um, with your salon spa. So. It's a critical metric because it really helps you understand that long-term impact and to think about how to make sure you're managing your marketing budget effectively. So why does this matter? Um, again, you'd want to structure those budgets for what it's worth getting that person rather than bidding to be profitable on that first and only visit they have with your business. So you'll use this information like your customer lifetime value along with your like customer acquisition costs to determine what you can profitably pay on advertising. So it's just important in understanding that just from an overall budget standpoint. So on the next slide here, yeah, I talk about um, in the, in it, like here's just an example I wanted to provide of what you know that that could look like for you. So um, maybe you could measure things such as the average frequency per month that somebody comes to your to your business. Um, the average service or treatment they spend a year, average customer lifespan with you, if they stay, they hang around, they're loyal to you for three years. And then thinking about the percentage of new clients that become repeat clients, 50% or more. Um, then your lifetime revenue for that particular customer would be around 3,600 just using these numbers, just as an example. Um, so as a side note to this though, as you can see, <laughs> Uh, keeping a customer coming back is incredibly important, as you know, um, and it's it's really something that, you know, our customers at Manglement really love our membership feature because of this, because they can kind of further solidify recurring revenue and further solidify that customer lifetime value by having a membership and having them continuously coming back month over month. So just important to think about that aspect of it, too. Um, so yeah, now that we have the math out of the way, uh, let's dive into kind of the seven different uh, principles here in Google Ads. Are we all good on, on volume, John? Everyone can hear us okay? I hope so. Um, so if you can just, yeah, perfect. Thanks, Tina. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so let's jump in. So also just as a side note, I'm gonna show you something at the end of this, uh, at the end of these seven principles, um, just to see if you recognize some of these like Google Insights as we cover some of them too. All right, let's jump into these seven principles. So we'll talk about setting up tracking, feeding Google data, uh, specifying your target audience, uh, research keywords, understanding the cost, defining your offer, building a relevant landing page, and continuing to monitor and optimize. Setting up tracking and feeding Google data. Um, so uh, if Google were Italian, he would be eating a lot of pasta carbonara. So that's what we want to feed it in terms of data. So these aren't necessarily, by the way, listed all in order of importance, but I did put this one number one for a reason, because we do live in an age of algorithms, automations, smart campaigns, machine learning, right? And Google uses machine learning and the way it works is like this. You give the machine as much data as you can, because the more data it has, the smarter it gets. So getting as much of that data as you can, tracking that and getting that pushed back into the Google platform is the most important thing other than anything else you will do within the campaigns themselves. So what I would recommend here um, is 
One, if you haven't been set up on Google Ads yet, hire a professional Google Ads strategist for a project to at least set up your account with tracking and Google Analytics as it does get kind of complex. Um, just so you know too what's happening once people get to your site, um, you start to see how many people have seen it, clicked on your ad, um, but someone like who does this regularly would implement all the tracking for like tracking phone calls, everything online. Um, and where it might feel like an additional cost you may not like really want to spend, uh, which you could probably expect to spend around two to three K, I would think. Um, if you don't, you'll likely end up burning that money anyway, just kind of running ads without that track it, tracking, not having much to show for it. So as an example, like you would need 50 conversions if a conversion was someone signing up for an appointment, for an example, per campaign per month so the Google algorithm can learn and get smarter. So I just want to just highlight that important point here. So the next thing is to determine your target audience. So um, when John was talking about kind of the difference between Facebook and Google, Google being a high intent channel is what we call it in marketing, and that's the intent of the user who's searching on Google is high. So you're reaching people with these ads who you don't really even need to sell that hard because they're already searching for an example, Hydra facials in your city or a specific thing that you're offering, right? So they're looking for that thing. So their intent is to find something like that versus being on Facebook or Instagram and kind of scrolling through pictures and seeing an advertisement. So just uh, consider that difference in your audience that, that that's there. So you wanna have the right setup where you can target the exact searches you want. So for an example, you can target people searching for hair extensions in your city or your neighborhood, um, give them an ad about hair extensions, right? So Google can be very precise with your demographic targeting, your gender, your age, your income, your location. So if you run a barber shop, services mainly men, you can exclude women from your search, things like that. This is also a, an important one that we could have an entire session around. Honestly, all these principles we could have an entire session around, but research keywords. So your best bet for a successful campaign is to focus on something you do really, really well, like a niche thing that your business is known for that's specific to what people are searching for already, because this will also impact your cost. So spend a lot of time here in the keyword research phase, really think about the keywords that you're using in your campaigns um, and understand you know, the differences in what Google calls keyword match types, like broad keywords, phrase keywords, exact match. But really trying to get granular here, focus on specific services that your business is strong in the local market for, rather than just bidding on like plain salon kind of broad terms themselves, because bidding on like really highly competitive keywords with a ton of search volume can really add up costs. It can get super, super expensive quickly if you let that run without someone managing it or having good management there. So. And bear in mind too that a click isn't even a guaranteed sale, right? You're just paying for that click. So definitely uh, spend some time in this area. And, and during this phase, you'll also discover some negative keywords to add to your account. So um, if you're only doing color correction, for an example, and you're bidding on uh, color correction for hair, and let's say you set this keyword as broad just for this example, which I'm not saying to do, but just, just for this example, Google could pull in many other search terms that have nothing to do with color correction, but because it has hair in it, you know, they'll pull in a bunch of other search terms that people are searching on that has the word hair in it. So, which you don't want to pay for services like that, like hair extensions, right, that you don't provide and you don't want to pay for those clicks. So um, they're not relevant to, to what you're doing. So adding negative keywords to your account is, is an ongoing task, but it does save small businesses and honestly, large businesses, even like ours. Um, small, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of money over time. So keep that in mind. All right, um, understanding the cost here. So um, we're gonna we're gonna bring it back to the customer lifetime value here piece too. And um, so I, the, I, the last we checked, beauty industry average was a dollar to five dollars per click. So cost really depends on several different things. Cost of ads can vary based on 
your goals and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I always just recommend to just if you're starting, just start small and adjust just based on how many clicks you're willing to pay for or you want to get in a given day or so. Um, you're charged when you get a click, uh, which again, all factors in like those costs on location, competition, um, ad copy, your offer, everything. So location plays a role in cost. Um, super populated areas, there's typically more competition for ads, which can definitely drive up your costs. Um, and, you know, Google operates as an auction, right? So um, there, if there are other salons advertising in your area, uh, the cost of your ads will likely be higher because you're, you're kind of competing for the same audience, right? So um, you can do things to save money though, like some tricks, you know, just if you want to appear on Google search alone, uncheck that Google display, like the search networks, network box. Um, so you only show up on Google search. Um, and just in general, on average, people can expect to pay between a dollar to $20 per click on Google ads with our average in the beauty industry being a little bit lower than that one to five per click. And uh, that's where if you really focus on those niche terms, you'll find uh, the cost here is also likely lower too. And so that's, that's also something that you can factor into the cost. So here I just wanted to provide an example. Um, I'm very visual. So sometimes I just need to see this laid out to try to understand like what I'm, you know, it's going on and um, what I'm hearing about. So um, these are some things that you could see in a very successful, by the way, with these numbers, Google ads campaign results. So you've got your cost per click, let's say for an example, $5. Um, you had 300 clicks um, on that ad. So uh, appointments booked out of that were $35 and that should say 300 clicks, not $300. Um, just FYI, that was a, that's a mistype. Um, so say your total spend was $1,500. So your revenue, if you charge 200 per, per appointment was 7,000. Um, so your cost per appointment conversion was $42. So your campaign ROI was 366%, right? Wow, this is fantastic. Um, if, if this was a, a realistic situation, but I just wanted to provide just some numbers here so you could start to identify like, okay, this campaign R ROI is fantastic, right? This is really good. Um, but if you go to the next slide, yep. thanks John. Um, but what if my campaign ROI isn't that high, right? And which, you know, I think that every one of us would be, you know, a lot of business owners would be happy to see that even at break even point. So what if it's break even on my campaigns? Is it worth it to keep spending money um, here? So that's where it's important to really think about that long term customer lifetime value, because the ROI on that campaign looks really great. But if it didn't look great, um, it's still only kind of factoring in that first time visit. So it's only looking at that customer's revenue from that one time that they saw your business, whereas the customer lifetime value, you're going to see profitability beyond that count, like that campaign click ROI beyond that first visit, because likely that these these customers aren't just having, you know, one visit with your business or they're coming back. Right. All right. Yeah, so uh, the last thing, or the fifth thing, is have a strong offer. <laughs> not, not the last one yet. Um, so have a strong offer. So one service, one offer. Again, we're kind of getting hyper-focused on the granularity. Having an offer here, um, something you do really well. Your niche, for example, like 25% off a hydrofacial or 25% on a full set of nails or hair extensions, kind of first time for new customers kind of thing. And then build a relevant landing page. So especially if you like, if you think about your website, if it's got a lot going on on it, and um, if you send somebody back to that site and you had an offer for 25% off a hydrofacial, for example, and you had a lot going on on your website that could confuse a user, um, it's not gonna be a really great experience. Google's gonna also kind of ding you on that if your ad doesn't really completely align with your landing page. So. Um, it really like I, I, I would suggest having a landing page specific to your ad on Google for a couple of reasons that you can control that experience. Um, and it really shouldn't have a bunch of other links for other things. They clicked on this to get a hydrofacial. They should land on a page that talks about the hydrofacial. Right. So um, have that be your call to action. Make it easy to easily book. 
Um, people will leave your website if your ad doesn't lead them to the page that, you know, offers exactly what they were looking for. They also might be confused that they like landed on the wrong thing. So you want to make that really clear that where they landed that, you know, is really connected to what they just clicked on. So, and they don't get distracted by other things. Um, there's also, you know, this is definitely in another area you could dive deeper to, but landing page relevance really impacts uh, quality score that Google gives you, which also impacts your cost. It impacts how often your ad shows up on the, the, the SERP. So definitely, um, definitely something to also spend a lot of time optimizing. I'm curious if anyone also is using like external landing pages for like an Insta page or uh, like a Mailchimp or something, or if you're if you're sending users back to their site. I'm curious to see that. Um, but kind of the main things uh, that a landing page should have is you know the headline should repeat the offer, have some testimonials, some social proof, some reviews. Any way to boost up your business and credibility if you want awards and things like that are important. Cool. Um, so yeah, here's a little exercise that I talked about earlier for folks um, where I did a Google search on Hydrafacial Phoenix. And this is what came up. And I'm just curious if you can see that hopefully well, and it's not too small. What anybody notices based on these results. Is it too small? Can I zoom in somehow? I'm not sure. It's not. It's all right. Yeah. I can I can walk walk them through it. But you'll see yeah, is that that's kind of working. I don't I don't know. Yeah, how yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. Um, but what you'll see is you'll have like the sponsored results okay. there. <laughs> You'll have the, the sponsored results that show up first. Yeah, they're like, yeah, this, this is too small, guys. All right. Well, if you do this search, you could pull up Google, Google really quick and just do like Hydrofacial Phoenix or something next to you um, and do it a couple different times because it's interesting because, um, yeah, first link's already visited. Yeah, that was me clicking on that. Um, and you'll see like the sponsored ones. So those are ads. And then it goes into like the Google organic where it's like Google will start to rank your business. So um, also if you see like next to sponsored, you can't really tell, but um, next to the logos, you'll see like a picture of like a globe or like a picture of someone's logo. You could change that in your ads. So I think it just it makes a business look more legitimate if they have like an actual logo there. So you just have to go in there and just upload it when you're uh, in your ad platform. So definitely do that because kind of just helps. Um, you'll see people have images on their ad, like the second one down, they've got an image there that's definitely eye-catching. They've got an offer, luxury facial Scottsdale, first time offer, $79, right? Um, and if you continue to go down the page, uh, it's cut off here, but if you see the first one being listed on organic, Google has like 988 reviews, like 4.8 stars. This person is also still paying for Google ads. You can see they're the first also sponsored ads. So they want to make sure that they're top, top of the page. And they're also doing a good job and boosting up their, their businesses reviews. Um, and, you know, there's, there's definitely a, a cohesive kind of synergy between Google organic and Google paid. Um, they kind of both help each other out. So like having those rankings will actually help your paid Google ads. And in this case, like you'll see the organic rankings are actually a little bit lower on the page. So this business wanted to make sure that they also show up number one on Google search results. Um, and if actually, I, I don't know if you can, I, I linked out the example of a nice looking landing page right there, John. Um, but uh, we can also just, I don't know if that'll open for you, but I just wanted to provide like an example of what like a nice looking page looked like, but something you'd probably check out afterwards too. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, so the last thing is, is monitor and optimize, right? So one way to light money on fire quickly is to set up Google ads and just forget about it, right? So there's a lot of optimizations that can be done on the front end. Monitor those search terms, um, like I mentioned, so that you make sure that you're not like unnecessarily spending on irrelevant keywords. Um, continue testing, continue iterating until you find that winning campaign, uh, like the one that had crazy ROI I showed earlier, um, just so you can replicate it, double down on it, um, continue to iterate and, and test. Cool. 
Awesome. Yeah. And Great. yeah. I see we're, we're having some questions coming in as we go along. Um, and we're going to be moving into questions very shortly here as well. Um, so yeah, just drop them in the chat if there's anything that comes up and we'll try to come back to that shortly. Uh, just wanted to, to share now how you can actually access the courses I talked about earlier. So if you are interested in like learning more about, you know, your Google My Business profile, you know, collecting reviews, optimizing that actually like all the like organic visibility, there's a full course there available. And in order to get access, just go to thesalonbusiness.com slash join and submit an application for that. And I'll just approve you. Um, doesn't cost anything and you'll get all of that. Um, and then, you know, if you want that other one for websites, it's, it's in there as well. Um, so yeah, that's where, that's where you go and where you find that. Should I, should I, maybe I can, I can type it in the chat when I'm, when I'm finished here, if you want to, if you want to, want it in written. Um, and then of course, like, as I mentioned earlier, um, the tool you use for having people book you online is going to be really important here. Like we want to streamline that journey. We want to be able to have smart offers in there or gift cards or selling, you know, basically like treating that journey in a seamless way and not putting like obstacles in front of our clients uh, when they book. Um, you know, Mango Mint is the platform that we promote. It's the best out there. If you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend you give it a spin and you will get one month free after your trial, after your free trial, uh, if you just say that you heard this on our webinar today as well. Um, so that's the other little resource and gift that we're leaving you with uh, before we're going into questions um so i did see some questions coming through um let me just scroll up um uh, one actually that was not really a question but uh, i think that was interesting from rachel as well christian uh, christensen um sounds like scandinavia i'm from scandinavia but uh, anyway so um i see you don't have you're not, you're not running Google ads, but getting a lot of business through the Google page, which is basically like that organic visibility, which we've stressed a few times, right? Before we run ads, let's, you know, get that in place. So I think that was just great to see that comment as well. And that is, that is also like driving business without paying as well. So we just want to like, just want to push that as well. Um, and then I says one question from Cheryl, what do you suggest we, we put for a business stating coming soon? So my, understanding of that question is if like you know before a, before a business is opening up right how can we prepare i this is how i read the question mm -hmm. uh, and i would really like encourage you to also like you know this that organic visibility as well starting to yes uh, building out your website you know investing in all of those things because it takes a little bit of time until like you know that google starts to pick up on all of those things so i think that's a perfect opportunity if you have a business coming up to work on some of that like getting your website up creating a business profile takes a couple of weeks just for Google to send a letter. Yeah. You know, all of like all of that stuff uh, is probably what I would like be focusing on primarily before opening up. Or yeah. Um so Yeah. And I there's some other questions. I agree with that too, by the way. Before yeah. business is starting, like SEO, like writing blogs on your site, just optimizing your website. Um, trying to get it into a place that it could start to show up organically on Google, even for your search term. So if you start talking a lot about hair extensions in your city, like, you know, connecting blogs and, and content to that, so you could rank organically as you, uh, as you kind of build up to get launched for your business, definitely, definitely a great idea. And then as you launch, just like having an entire strategy around trying to get five-star reviews, like taking photos, like. I think too, um, you know, not everybody uh, likes like their face in photos. So just like having maybe even like a selfie station or somewhere someone can take photos and post their own photo of themselves. More people are willing to do that um, when they don't have like their face in it. So you could just take a picture of them, send it to them, ask them for a review if they're really happy with your with your service. So 100% uh, recommend that. And then I want to, I saw one question about, um, yeah, uh, you know, examples of like common ROI or typical ad spend. And that's that's why I talk a lot about um, understanding like the business um, metrics, because it really just depends on you and your goals. Um, like I said, most a lot of people would be happy to just break even on ROI on a campaign because they know that the customer lifetime value is actually higher than that. 
Um, it just depends, like the, sometimes there's just a marketing investment that is involved that you're willing to eat as you build up your business. Sometimes you're looking to see more profitability on ad spend. So it just, it just depends. It just depends on you. And that's why understanding those business me metrics can really kind of more help you identify like, where is that profitability point for me? Uh, cause it may be different for you than someone else. But I mean, if you're seeing that you're getting a lot of clicks and you're like negative ROI on campaigns, that's definitely an indication that you should go kind of back to the drawing board and think about your offer. Uh, what's the quality score Google's giving you, um, you know, really dive into how to, how to improve those things so you could start getting better rankings. Um, so then I saw there was a question on, oh, a recommended company that can help, um, and it just depends too on, on whether like you wanna hire a company or like a person. A lot of Google ad strategists, even ones that work at agencies or ones that work um, at companies, um, they also do a lot of online for local businesses too. LinkedIn, just hearing their tips all the time. Um, they're always just posting a lot of like really informational tips on, on running Google ads. And a lot of them kind of freelance on the side and take on local businesses. So I think that could be also a good cost-effective option just to have somebody kind of audit your account or set you up. It's hiring like one person that really, really specializes in Google ads because it goes so many, so many layers deep there. Um, but I can also try to list out like some of those people so you can look for yourselves. Uh, what's nice is they can kind of be all over the globe, right? Because, you know, they can just work remote. So they don't have to even be in your area. Um, I saw another one. Um, how frequently, how much time do you recommend or estimate someone should take in monitoring and optimization? It is overwhelming to try and figure out how to work that into a pack schedule. I couldn't even imagine doing that and like a, such a pack schedule, like trying to manage both. It just, it also too depends on, um, like where you are in your Google ads journey and like whether you're just starting or like you've established that campaign. But I think until you get to the point where you've established that winning campaign, you know you're getting good ROI on that campaign, it, it's like doing well for you. I mean, even in that case, you might wanna expand that out to another service line that you have a good niche in. But, um, and even there, there's gonna be monitoring of like your search terms, making sure that you're not spending money on clicks that aren't relevant to your business, testing things, like there's always optimi optimizations that could be done. So it's like, it just depends. Like um, also if you're starting out probably more heavily, you know, again, I would recommend on your schedule, how many hours, how much interest also you have in doing this on your own. Um, Sometimes there's some things that are worth spending a little bit of money for where you will see the return on investment. Um, and then you can maybe learn through that experience too, through this person. And once you feel like you've got a winning campaign, you could take that on yourself or hire someone part-time to manage it for you. Maybe they manage other things as well, um, like Facebook ads or something like that. So uh, it just depends, but hopefully hopefully that answer is a little better. It's not like a set, set of hours, but I would say defi definitely heavier lifting on the front end than there will be once you hit that winning campaign point. Cool. Any yes. other questions? Awesome. Good. Yeah, thanks for all the questions. And we're coming up on kind of the 45 minutes. Um, if we have in the last one, um, I saw from journey as well. Um, no, no, it wasn't. Uh, anyway, the question was, can you find this on YouTube from Linda? Sorry. Uh, yes. So we'll publish the recording of this one um, on probably both the Mango Mint YouTube channel and, and the Salon business. So you, you will be able to find it there. Uh, so yeah, they are recorded. And on there, you will also find because there were some questions on like the organic visibility. And I did run a session just like this two months ago, I think, where there was a recording from where I'd walk through like more on the organic side of optimizing your Google profile and all of that which is also available on that channel. And if you're watching the recording, I'll link to it when I, when I upload this video here. So you can find that as well. Like if you want to go into that organic part, naturally you also have, um, you know, these, how do I go back? Um, the full courses as well, uh, where we go into that as well uh, on, on the link here. Awesome. Um, so thanks everyone for joining today. Thanks Jessica for uh, yeah. taking part of this session. Of and, 
I think this was really valuable. I, I learned a ton of things today and I feel there was like great questions coming in the chat as well. So clearly like, um, you know, we, we all learned a lot of things today uh, on how we can use Google ads to attract more clients. Uh, so yeah, great. Thanks for the engagement. Thanks Hans. Thanks Marcel. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks Cheryl, Sherry, uh, really great questions. Uh, awesome doing this. And uh, if you weren't aware, we run this, uh, webinars we run webinars basically every week but this is like more business and marketing centric one that we host on the salon business we run every month um so like touching different topics uh, to help you grow uh, your business um so that is it for today thanks everyone thank uh, you guys for joining have a beautiful rest of the day awesome. thanks jessica thanks john all right Cheers. see ya bye bye see you